Well, I came to Ireland in 1983, and uh, I was studying at uh, Dublin Airport, you know. I'm, I'm a qualified aircraft technician, but uh, I couldn't find a job in Ireland back then as an aircraft technician, so I started doing um, other jobs, like, you know, I worked as a chef, you know, for, until 1992 when I um, met this reggae band in uh, Wheelands. When I heard about this reggae band, Black Survivors, playing, I just went to uh, go and see them, you know. And uh, we became really good friends, you know, and they asked me basically to, uh, to promote them and uh, organize a few tours for them in, in Ireland. So we organized a reggae Christmas explosion, you know, 1992, you know. To fund that uh, tour, I had to sell some records. So they were sending me records from England, you know, to sell them to shops around Dublin to get the money to promote the tours. And I remember um, I was going to Abbey Discs and I was going to Freebird Records. I was selling them reggae records so I can get the money, but every two, three weeks I go there, they only sold a few copies. You know, so like, the hell with it, we need a reggae shop, we need a reggae shop, we need a reggae shop. And the reggae shop idea was, was a dream, you know, in my mind for about four years until the dream became a reality in 1999. And that's basically how I got involved with reggae music, you know. I didn't, like I said, uh, I didn't choose reggae music. Reggae music chose me, like, you know. Most of people have a smartphone nowadays. And uh, what affected uh, the sales more is, like, after the recession, you know, I mean, things were going great until 2007, 2008. And then after the recession, things went really bad. So a lot of people s struggled, you know what I mean? But, you know, there is um, recovery kind of, you know, the last couple of years, you know what I mean? Especially people, uh, all, most people will buy vinyl because you can't download vinyl. In the same time, we sell, you know, Rhythm Driven clothing, you know, which is called Rhythm Driven. It's made by a company called VP who make reggae music and they make reggae clothes, you know? So that kept uh, the business going. It wasn't, it's not just old music. Because we started small, you know, we didn't know what people wanted and we didn't have that much money, basically, you know what I mean? But eventually, like I said to you, you know, you'll know what, what sells, what doesn't sell, what people want. People come and buy Bob Marley. Back then, I didn't have Bob Marley, you know what I mean? So I started getting Bob Marley, I started getting other stuff that, um, that people want. And um, yeah, you know, it's, um, you know, we're still here, yeah. Reggae music is, is, is like, you know, it's like a drug, you know, once you, once you love it, you just can't, you know what I mean? And it's, it's a lovely music, man, you know what I mean? It's like, it's not a music that teaches violence or, you know what I mean? It's all about one love, about community, look after each other and, you know, one love and, you know what I mean? Respect your, your elders and respect people. So it's a, it's a music that teaches you good things. And a lot of people love to, to hear good stuff like that, you know, makes you happy, makes you, you know, in a nice mood. And it's nothing to do with the smoke, you know, people say, oh, reggae music, it has something to do with, the, you know, everybody smokes. I know a lot of people who used to come to my club who, you know, you never smoked in their life, you know what I mean? They never smoked ganja in their life or weed or whatever you call it, but they love reggae music, they love to dance it, some of them they don't even drink, you know? So it's like, you know, there are some people who never like reggae and they smoke their head off every day, you know what I mean? You'll be surprised how many people, like, you know, we serve, like from Italy, from Spain, from Poland, one of my best customers is a Polish guy, you know, who after buying a lot of music from us, went to Poland and they started a sound system, you know, uh, I think it's called uh, Smoke the Krakow. That's, that's the name of the sound system, they, but we helped them to, to obtain the music that he couldn't get even in Poland, yeah. you know, so that's why I feel like my, my job is crucial, it's not about money, it's like a mission. Our mission is to spread the reggae music and the reggae love and vibe all over Ireland, but what we did, we went beyond Ireland. You know, it's an honor for me and it's a pleasure to know that some of my records that bought here, it's in Italy. Some of the records bought from our shop is in Spain. Some of the records bought from us in Germany, America, you know. Mm. So yeah, man, we went worldwide, you know. <laughs>